Hello, I'm Ted Danglemeyer with Danglemeyer Associates, and for this demonstration, we're going to be talking about the pitfalls associated with making field measurements. A field meter like this is very commonly used throughout the industry, and yet it's the one that we rarely see people using correctly. In fact, all, with all the factories that we've visited over the years, we have yet to see it being used correctly. And we're going to share with you some of the pitfalls today, some of the others like field uh, voltage suppression were discussed in one of the other videos. But let's take a look at the image behind me. We have, a, again, a typical field meter here. You have a zero that has to be set to know the reading for a starting point. You have different scales to use, uh, kilovolts per inch or volts per inch, and that can make a difference in how you make the measurements. Uh, the meter must be grounded. This is the, one of the most common uh, problems is people don't ground the meter or they're not grounded themselves. In fact, I'm gonna put my wrist strap on now and tell you that we were sent all the way to Korea because the engineer of uh, uh, one of our customers did not know how to use the meter. He was reporting unusual voltages, and it turns out that he was not grounded, and the meter was giving us a, a false reading because of that. So you and the meter both need to be grounded, very important, and that's true for the electrostatic voltmeters that we'll be discussing as well. Today we're going to concentrate primarily on the field of view of the measurement. When you have a field meter, it, and it's set to the proper distance, which is one inch from the object, it will view a radius around it four times that distance. In other words, it will look at a space about four inches in diameter, and it will average into the measurement whatever is detected within that field of view. Very important distinction because it can give you very misleading results, and we'll show you that uh, shortly. The, uh, field, the electrostatic voltmeter, on the other hand, can uh, be set to make measurements at a much closer distance. The, the rule of thumb of four to one still applies, but the spacing for the recommended distance on the measurement with field meters can be down to just a few three to five millimeters. So that reduces the field of view and gives you more accurate measurements on smaller objects. Very important distinction, and typically the electrostatic voltmeters are not well known, and yet they're a very, uh, very powerful uh, tool to have in your kit. They both have their place. Here you see there are two different types. Here's a handheld battery version, and here is a laboratory grade instrument that uh, needs to be uh, plugged into AC power. Now, if we're talking about this field of view, what I want to show you in a moment is a, a demonstration related to this. And you can see this is the test setup that you're about to see. And what we have on the right is a battery pack. There are, there are five nine volt batteries. So, and they're connected to these uh, copper colored disks. So each disk is at exactly the same voltage. They're at the battery voltage, which is close to 45 volts. The silver area is a ground plane underneath it. So again, talking about the field of view, what will happen is we'll get distorted measurements if the field of view is too large. So let's take a look at the, the setup that you'll be seeing again momentarily. Here are the instruments that we're going to use. We're going to use the electrostatic voltmeter, the field meter, and a contact voltmeter, which will give us a contact precise measurement of the voltage and you'll see the variation that we're going to get momentarily. Here we are comparing the measurements that we're getting on the large disk versus the small disk. Now, as I, as I make the transition now to the demonstration, decide for yourselves what kind of variation we're likely to see with these different instruments. I'm gonna start with the field meter, and we're gonna do this demonstration um, real time. We're going to begin this demonstration with a contact voltmeter. 
And this meter has a very high, in fact, all contact voltmeters have a very high input impedance. Um, <clears throat> and in this case, there is a static dissipative tip, a ceramic dissipative tip, which allows you to make contact and make measurements of the potential on conductors that will not remove charge or risk uh, stressing the product that you're evaluating. <clears throat> to make sure we're started correctly, we're going to touch the zero connection. You see that our, our meter is zeroed properly. And I'm going to go to the first plate. Now, we would expect each of these disks to have 45 volts because they're biased by these five batteries or a level close to it. And as we do that, we confirm we have 46 volts on the large disk. We have 46 volts on the medium-sized disk and 46 volts on the small disk. That is what we would expect with a direct contact measurement. And again, the high input impedance allows us to do that without removing charge. Next, we're going to make the same measurements, uh, this time with an electrostatic voltmeter. And this particular model has a 2,000 volt maximum range. And along with that comes a, a, a measurement distance of only a few millimeters, which means you place the, the probe uh, close to the item that you're measuring. And then uh, you can capture the, the, the reading effectively. You'll find that this meter also is less uh, susceptible to distance variation than a field meter. So let's begin and see what we get on the large disk. And you'll see that we ended up with the same reading. We don't necessarily get that every time, but uh, pretty close to it. Uh, this time I got 47 volts. And down here, we're going to get something very close to that. Here we got 45 volts. So why is that? Well. As a rule of thumb, the measurement area, the diameter of the measurement area is four times the measurement distance. Therefore, with only a few millimeter spacing between the measurement or the measurement distance, the circular area of the measurement is, again, in the millimeter range. So all three of these disks are small enough that the meter um, measurement is contained within the diameter of each of these three circles. Again, because of the small uh, measurement distance, the small area of the measurement uh, allows an accurate measurement on small objects. Now, if we move to the field meter, this is different in that the measurement distance is one inch. Therefore, the measurement area is a four inch diameter circle. So if you have an object that is that size or larger, you'll get a true, an accurate measurement. If not, what will happen? And we'll find out in a second. Here, I'm going to get down into the, oops. What's going on here? Oh, I see. OK. Oh, I lost it. I hit it. Sorry. Bear with me. On the large circle, as one would expect, we got the same reading as the other two meters. We got 46 volts. Now, what will happen when we go to the smaller circle? Well, in this case, we're still looking at a measurement area of a four inch diameter which means it's going to integrate into the measurement the zero potential of the silver ground plane. And therefore, the reading will uh, logically be lower than the 45 volts. So if we get down to about the same spacing, it's, 
as you know, it's hard to get exactly an inch. But here we go. We have 37 volts on the medium size circle, which follows logically because we're now including part of the ground plane in the measurement. So it will reduce the overall reading. Now, if we do the same thing for the small object, the small circle, we get 19 volts. And that also follows logically because the proportion of the zero volt ground plane is greater than either of the other two measurements. So what we have is the understanding that a field meter, uh, when you're measuring small objects, may not be the right choice. For instance, in an automated tool where there is extensive metal, uh, grounded metal, if you use a field meter in trying to measure a small object like an integrated circuit, uh, your reading is likely to be compromised by the ground planes or the ground objects. A better choice in that case would be uh, the electrostatic voltmeter, where you can measure small objects even in proximity to grounded metal. If you're measuring a conductor, then maybe the contact voltmeter is the better choice. And thank you. That concludes this demonstration.